kingdom of God. Blessed are they, full of sorrow, they shall be consoled. Rejoice and be glad, blessed are you, holy are you. Rejoice and be glad, yours is the kingdom of God. Welcome to Cathedral. I'm Father Greg Sack with special thanks once again to Mark Teresi and David Jonas. I thank you every week, but I do that on purpose because you go out of your way to provide beautiful music for this weekly spiritual video. So thank you, Mark and David. Special thanks once again to Paula Colleen, who's been doing this for a long time, a real veteran, takes the whole package, puts it together, with always with a smile on her face. So Paula, thank you very much. This first full weekend in June, it's hard to believe we have now started June. It's like, wow. And we celebrate the Holy Trinity Sunday. Last weekend was Pentecost, this weekend is Holy Trinity. I'd like to begin this way. Many years ago, Groucho Marx stepped off a train in New York City and was greeted by a priest. And the priest says, Mr. Marx, I want to thank you for all the joy you have brought into people's lives. And Groucho Marx said to the priest, he says, Father, I want to thank you for all the joy you've taken out of people's lives. We have to realize the Lord is with us in good times and hard times, but to be passionate, compassion, filled with compassion, and take a positive approach because the Lord is with us. And through the concept of the Holy Trinity, which may sound a bit confusing, the Feast of the Most Holy Trinity is meant to be truly joyful. So today we celebrate Trinity Sunday, and every time we make the sign of the cross, we are reminded that God is our Father and Creator, Jesus is the Son and Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit is the Sanctifier, the Holy Trinity. True story. Upon graduating from Niles College Seminary of Loyola University, the College Seminary of the Archdiocese, I was there from 71 to 75. And from there, I entered the major seminary, St. Mary of the Lake Seminary in Mundelein for theological graduate studies for my last four years until ordination in 1979. I remember my first year in the major theologate. It would have been the fall of 1975. I took a course that first semester entitled Trinity grace and creation. Here was one of my final exam questions regarding the Holy Trinity. Here's the actual test. Here's my handwriting. This test was taken in the fall of 1975, almost 48 years ago. I save all my tests and notes from the major theologate. Here's the question from Father Charlie Meyer. This was the question on the Holy Trinity. Uh, solve this problem. Whatever three realities are totally identified with the same fourth reality must be totally identified with one another. Example, if A equals B and C equals B, then A equals C. But the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are all really identified with the divine nature. Therefore, the Trinity is really identified with and not distinct from one another. Please comment. Please comment. My answer more closely resembled Abbott and Costello's Who's On First. I didn't have a clue what I was talking about, but by the grace of God, I passed the test and passed the course. Through the centuries, Theologians have used various images to try to give us a better insight into the Holy Trinity. St. Patrick used the three leaves of a clover to convey the idea of the Trinity. 
St. Ignatius of Loyola used the example of three notes forming one musical sound. The understanding of the Trinity does not lend itself to a simple answer. The following story may put into better perspective how to understand the Holy Trinity. There's a story of a man celebrating his 105th birthday. He was surrounded by newspaper reporters, TV crews, photographers, and family. One of the reporters asked him, what has been your secret for living 105 years? The little man looked at the crowd of reporters, paused and, and, and answered, keep breathing, keep breathing. The elderly man did not have any secret. He didn't pretend to have an easy answer to the mystery we call life. He kept his answer simple. The same is true about the Trinity. All of us in life seek answers. But the Trinity, that relationship between the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is a mystery. In a nutshell, we cannot define the reality of God because God is the ultimate mystery. I'll say it again. We cannot define the mystery of God because God is the ultimate mystery. And it's okay to live in mystery. Our lives are also a mystery. We're a mystery to ourselves. It's okay not to have all the answers. We don't have to know exactly what will happen tomorrow. Why? Because God is found in the present moment. And I always say this, God is not found in the past. God is not found in the future. God is found in the present moment. We need a past. We need a future. We need the connectors, past, present, future. And, but too many people live only in the past. Too many people live only in the future, and we need the past and future, but God is found in the present moment. In God, we live and move and have our being. In God, we live and move and have our being. One of my all-time favorite posters captures what I would want to share with you today. Life is a mystery to be lived and not a problem to be solved. I heard that or saw that 40, 45 years ago as a baby young priest. Life is a mystery to be lived and not a problem to be solved. Maybe that is why the church in her wisdom offers us the doctrine of the Trinity. Blessed are we with an unlimited curiosity and imagination. We must in our deep desire to know God and to love God and to serve God come to realize that in the end, God is always wrapped in holy mystery. Maybe the purpose of the divine doctrine of the Trinity is not so much to define God as it is to invite us into the mystery of God, that no string of words could ever really describe with total accuracy the Holy Trinity. And inviting us into this mystery of God we're invited into the mystery of life, loving, sharing, and relationships. In the end, we know this to be true. God is love. And the life God calls us to truly live is a sharing of the heart through relationships with everyone. It is a holy mystery. What words fail to capture, our hearts beg us to simply enjoy God is with us always. Do you want to experience God's love? Love someone. Do you want to experience life? Be life-giving to others. Do you want to be forgiven? Do you want to be free? Stop holding grudges. Stop judging. Do you want God to answer your prayers? Meet someone's needs. Learn to share and be open. What have I experienced or where have I experienced the saving presence of God in my life? Through family, friends, and through simple joys, but also through this tremendous faith community of Holy Name Cathedral. I have so experienced the saving presence of God through you, through you, through loving and caring people who have touched my life and given me so much. Now, we may continue to seek clear answers to complicated problems. But the Trinity reminds us
that final answers are not available outside relationship, love, and service. We are called to know the Trinity, not by explaining the mystery, but by praising, loving, forgiving, and serving God, by living and experiencing the mystery. Why? Because everything we have is from God. Everything we have is for God. And by the way, keep breathing. Amen. God bless all of you. We have been told, we've seen his face and heard his voice alive in our hearts. Live in my love with all your heart as the Father has loved me so I have loved you. I am the vine, you are the branches, and all who live in me will bear great fruit. We have been told, we've seen his face, and heard his voice alive in our hearts. Live in my love with all your heart as the Father has loved me so I